In this video, we will demonstrate how to use our vCenter Server Windows to vCenter Server Appliance migration tool. In addition to an inventory, our vCenter Server Windows has three plugins attached, NSX, Veeam, and VMware Update Manager. The appliance will migrate these extensions as well as the inventory. As you can see, our inventory has a number of hosts organized in a vSAN cluster. The first step is to stop all extensions attached to vCenter. Here, we stop the NSX extension. Next, we stop the Veeam and VMware Update Manager extensions. Now that these extensions are stopped, we will begin the migration. We have deployed the migration tool in our environment. We will now go to its remote console. The first step is to set up the network. You can either use DHCP or input your own static IP. Before you begin the migration, you must deploy a vCenter server appliance with the same IP address and host name as your source Windows vCenter server. Do not power on this appliance. We recommend that you snapshot this appliance in the event that any issues occur during migration. This is our vCenter server appliance. Please enter credentials for the Windows host on which the source vCenter server is running. These are the credentials for the administrator on the Windows host, not the credentials for the Windows vCenter server administrator. The migration appliance will copy some data from the Windows host. At this point, please turn off the Windows host where the source vCenter is running. When the Windows host is powered off, please power on the vCenter server appliance. Migration times will vary depending on the size of your inventory. Once you have powered on the vCenter server appliance, please return to the console of the migration tool to continue the migration. The tool will wait for the vCenter server appliance to be ready before it proceeds to the next step. Press yes to accept the host key for the vCenter server appliance. Next, enter the root password for the vCenter server appliance. If you did not change it during deployment of the appliance, then the password is VMware. Next, enter the DNS search suffix for the vCenter server appliance. At this point, files are being copied from the migration tool to the vCenter server appliance. Next, log into the vCenter server appliance administrator console. The URL is given on the tools screen. Proceed to configure the appliance and be sure to select embedded database. Use the same root password that you used when you deployed the appliance. Remember, the password is VMware if you have not changed anything. The configuration wizard will guide you through setting up the vCenter server appliance. On this page, select Set Custom Configuration. Next, keep the default database type, which is embedded. On this page, Type in the SSO password for the administrator at vSphere.local user. If you are using Active Directory, please click on Active Directory Enabled and input the domain name and credentials. If you are not using Active Directory, you can skip this step. Confirm that your settings are correct and click Next to finish. After you complete the wizard, the vCenter server appliance is up and running. 
we are now ready to complete the migration. Go back to the remote console of the migration tool. Click OK to start copying data. At this point, the tool is installing the certificates copied from the source vCenter windows onto the vCenter server appliance. Please click Yes to proceed with this step. Enter the administrator at vSphere.local password for the vCenter server appliance. This is the password that you created in the vCenter server appliance configuration wizard. Select if you want this domain configured as an identity source in single sign-on. If not, you can clear the box on the screen. We are now ready to migrate data from the source database to the vCenter server appliance. On this page, enter the credentials for the database that was connected to the source Windows vCenter server. If you would like to migrate statistics, events, and tasks data, check the corresponding box. If you choose this option, the time required for the migration will increase. The migration of the inventory is complete. Now we must restart the extensions. Go to NSX to start that first. Next, restart Veeam. And then VMware Update Manager. For certain extensions like NSX, you must not only restart the extension, but resync it with vCenter, as shown here. As you can see, NSX is now enabled and synced to vCenter. Now, log in to the vCenter server appliance via the web client. The initial login will take longer than subsequent logins because plugins are being installed. Upon login, the inventory and plugins will be displayed on the web client interface. As you can see, the inventory information was properly migrated.